Toolkit RC have recently announced their latest battery balance charger. This is the M7AC, and as well as balance charging all the usual battery types like LiPos, lithium ion and so on, this 300 watt charger has a couple of tricks up its sleeve that make it extremely useful and a powerful tool to have in your flight bag or indeed on the bench. Now, you can power it from a DC supply or directly from the mains outlet. So you can use this on the bench or out in the field, whichever you like. With DC power and a suitable supply, this is an impressive 300 watt charger. It also has its own internal AC power supply and using the internal supply, this is a 100 watt charger. Plus, this doesn't just charge batteries. It's a very versatile multifunction tool that allows you to test your servos, ESCs and receivers. So if something isn't working while you're out in the field or indeed on the bench at home, you can use this to quickly analyze, find and fix the problem. So this is a 300 watt battery charger, a power supply, a multimeter, a signal source and a signal tester all in this one small box. Now, I'm slightly late reviewing this charger because during my usual thorough testing of the early production unit that Toolkit RC kindly sent me, I discovered a minor problem that wasn't picked up by anyone else. But thankfully, Toolkit RC fixed the issue very quickly, but more of that later. So, let's have a closer look at what this charger can do. Hello. And welcome to the Whirly channel. This is YouTube. You know what to do. This charger follows the familiar style Toolkit RC have used on all their recent chargers. There's this 2.4 inch IPS display with the scroll wheel here for selecting things and you just click it to select. And there's this back or escape button here. Now on the back, there's an XT60 to connect a DC supply or another battery if you want. Anything between seven and 28 volts at up to 20 amps is fine. And if you use this DC input with a suitable supply, this charger can deliver up to 300 watts charge power. But this has also got an internal AC power supply. So you can plug this into your mains outlet and that's very convenient when you're at home. And using the internal supply makes this a 100 watt charger, which is still very respectable. It means you can charge, say, a 6S LiPo at one and a half amps if you want. If you want more, you just need to use the DC input. On the front here, there's a USB socket for either charging up USB devices or for upgrading the firmware. And like always, Toolkit RC make upgrading just so ridiculously easy. You just download the upgrade from their website, connect this to your PC with a USB cable, and it appears like an external drive. And then you just drop the upgrade file onto the drive, which is dead easy. And on this side, there's an XT60 and an XT30 connector main port with this neat slide cover to stop you plugging in two batteries at once. It's quite clever. So there's no more adapters needed because you can use XT30 directly or XT60, whichever you like. There's a two to six S balance port and there's this little removable cover here for standard servo plug style connectors. And if you're using this as a signal generator or a measurer, you can plug them into either of the connections under here. On the side here is a speaker and this little slot here is an SD card slot for custom sounds, voices, and a logo on the startup display if you want it. And do make sure you use anything between a 128 meg and a 16 gig card. I tried something a bit larger and this didn't read it. Oh, and there's this little flip up stand on the back here if you want to use it on the bench. You get a mains lead with this, a nice little screen protector and a USB cable in the box. And there's a small manual, but there's a full PDF version downloadable on their website. So let's see how easy this is to use. So we plug this in here and I'll have the switch on anyway. There is a switch on the back and a fan. You just get a little burst of fan, which is quite nice. 
So what's this here? We've got a 1300 milliamp hour 4 s cell. So we just plug this on that side. Get that in there. Plug this into the balance port leftmost first, which is fine. And we can see on here this is showing us that we've got 15.53 volts on the battery here and there's no charge current and these are showing the current voltages on each of the cells. It's 4S so there's four of them and this was at storage charge I know because our storage charged it fairly recently so they're all about 3.8 volts which is fine. Up here it shows you the input voltage we're using the mains input so the internal supply is 18 and a bit volts that shows you uh, how much power is being used we're not doing anything at the moment so it shows zero and then we've got the internal uh, temperature. The fan comes on at a preset temperature which you can change if you want to. So to start charging you just click and we are going to charge LiPo. Auto it will pick up the fact it's got four cells. Now on here you can charge, discharge or storage charge. I've got this set to storage charge because I was recently just bringing a lot of my batteries uh, down to storage ready for winter storage so let's put this on charge we're on 4.2 volts and the charge currents 1.3 amps hit start confirm and off we go it's charging away quite nicely it's going up to 1.3 amps this uh, little bit down here if you scroll across it will show you the individual cell voltages and the little flashing squares show you how the balance circuit is working. And if we scroll across to here, it shows you a measure of the internal resistance of the battery. And these should all be about the same. These are all pretty good. 12 milliohms is a battery that's in pretty good condition, so it's not too bad. So to stop this, or to change the charge current, you just click the scroll wheel, and I'm going to stop it. There we go. It's that easy, very straightforward. Let's just unplug this. Now, uh, there are a whole load of settings associated with this charger. Very easy to use, just long press the scroll wheel. And you can see here, there's an impressive set of different uh, settings. So we've got the input settings, maximum power, input voltage range, etc some security settings which is all to do with safe temperatures you can set those to whatever you want personalization this allows you to change the intensity of the backlight there's a little clicker on if I've turned it off at the moment if I turn that up to you can hear you can have that on if you want and then you've got a whole load of things like the announcement volume warning volume that's if you're using an SD card on the side here with different voices on it I don't bother using that to be honest. Then you've got a whole load of things like continuous work, for example. So if you're charging, say, four of these and you start charging it, if you unplug it when it's finished and then plug another one in, it will just carry on charging with the same settings as before, which is very useful if you've got a lot of the batteries that are very similar and you're charging them all up together, which is very nice, plus a whole load of other stuff. Now, as I said at the top, this is a multifunction tester and measurer and signal generator. It's like a whole load of bits of test equipment all rolled into one. And you access that through this port at the front here. So if I find it and get this out, you'll see it's a little bit tricky to get out. There we go. don't quite know why they make it quite so hard. And you can see that what we've got here are two servo plug style connectors. Now, what you can do is if you long press the exit button, you get to a different set of menus. And this is test mode and signal generator mode. So we... I've got no battery connected, but that's just going to measure the internal resistance, which you could have done anyway when you're charging. 
So if we wanted to measure a signal, so say we had a, an SBUS receiver and we wanted to check that it was actually generating an SBUS signal. If you take that receiver and plug it into here using a servo lead and you go into measure signal, uh, we can choose PWM, PPM or SBUS. If you then waggle the sticks on your receiver when it's bound to the, the sorry, on your transmitter and you connect the receiver onto here, you'll actually see these SBUS signals moving up and down. So it's a way of testing your receiver. Equally, you can actually use this to generate an SBUS output. Let's say you weren't quite sure whether your receiver was working correctly or whether your flight controller wasn't responding correctly to SBUS, you could use this to generate an SBUS signal directly into your flight controller and test it out. So uh, we can generate PWM, PPM and SBUS. So on here I could select SBUS. Oops, if I could do it properly. There we go. And then I can wind this around let's say on channel 4 I can generate a signal, you can see it's moving come down, up and down here so this is plugged directly into your flight controller, you should see it in beta flight or iNav, whatever you're using but it's a way of testing whether your receiver or your flight controller is not working correctly it's very useful, you're not going to use it very often but when you need it, it's very useful so we escape out of there. We go down here. You've also got the ability to plug your ESCs into here to test those. Again, very useful. Uh, here is the power button. Now what that means is that you can use this as a DC bench power supply. You can set the output voltage, the output current. Again, useful if you don't already have a DC bench, variable bench power supply. An incredibly useful piece of kit. Like I say, you're not going to use it that often, but when you need it, it's going to save your bacon. As I said at the top, I discovered a minor issue with this charger that delayed my review. It turned out to be a problem on early production units. On AC power, it would report an error and stop charging after about 20 to 90 seconds. Now, Toolkit RC fixed this extremely quickly. Glitches inevitably happen in production, and how quickly a company responds and fixes it show you how good they are. To be completely honest, this completely threw me. I like to thoroughly test stuff, especially chargers, before I wave them around in front of the camera saying how great they are. Although I don't show it on camera, mainly because it's just boring, I do put chargers through some pretty extreme tests to check they're working to spec. Now, big thanks go to Ian over at Mads Tech Channel for generously using his valuable time to confirm my test results and my sanity on this particular problem and to Toolkit RC for fixing the issue so quickly during one of their national holidays. So, Toolkit RC have added another multifunction charger to their range of chargers. This is an upgraded version of their original 200 watt M7 charger that gives you up to 300 watts with all the same features but in a slightly larger case and with an internal power supply. This makes it more than just a field charger and gives you the convenience of just being able to plug it directly into the mains outlet. But it's still small enough to fit in your flight bag. Just remember, on AC, this is a 100 watt charger, and on DC input with a suitable supply, it's a 300 watt charger. And that's a pretty impressive thing for such a small unit that you can just throw in your flight bag. The price on this is 106 pounds, or around $120, and I'll leave links in the video description so you can check out the latest prices and availability. As always, thanks for watching, and if you found this helpful, why not subscribe and maybe buy me a coffee to support the channel? It'd be very much appreciated, and I'll see you next time.